Executive Vice President at Hunch Analytics, and I served as the first Chief Technology Officer of the United States. The healthcare system is undergoing a tremendous amount of change. Some would argue, I would argue, this is the most entrepreneurial period in the healthcare industry, at least in my lifetime and perhaps many generations earlier. And it's because of three trends that are occurring at this moment in time. The most important of which is we're fundamentally changing the way we are paying for healthcare in America. This shift in payment is changing what it is that doctors and hospitals are looking for on their tech-enabled solutions. It used to be, I want to submit a bill, get paid for the care that I had been documenting laboriously into my records so that I could earn my uh, payment. Today, we're, fit, we're shifting from just documenting and billing to thinking about the population at large. Who are the patients that are not coming into my clinic that I should be thinking about because if I could reach out to them, perhaps we could avoid an unnecessary trip to the hospital. The first trip, rewarding those providers who move to that type of thinking. Second, in order to help them figure out which patients they should be focused on, the government has opened up unprecedented amounts of health information, macro data, as well as patient individual data for health systems that are working with the Medicare program. This is opening up another feed of information that needs to be managed and used so that they can care for patients in a different way. And then last but certainly not least, the desire to make sure that as we digitize what was previously in the manila folders, that we can actually exchange that information and coordinate care better so that whether or not that patient is being seen by me or a fellow doctor or a nurse practitioner, that we're on the same page. We're reminding that patient to take their medications, to take their preventive services and so forth. These three trends, the opening up of data, the changing of payment, as well as the interoperability of records are what make this the most entrepreneurial period. Now what's new? We are starting to see for the first time what was previously on paper in manila folders and now in digital form in electronic systems be exposed as discrete pieces of data that can fuel connected apps that make better sense of the system. Now I want to know which patients have had a blood pressure that's been elevated in the time since we've last visited. Well, it used to be I'd have to rummage through all of their records and if it was digital to sift through their many, many page documents. And today I'm in a position where I can just literally ask for that blood pressure and figure out of all the patients who've got blood pressure checks, which ones are elevated, I can do something about it. That's new and it's a big deal because now organizations are capable of taking advantage of all three threads. This idea of caring for people in a different way and opening up the information isn't just because it's good for us and it's important for the care delivery system, it's increasingly how we are governed and how the system is managed. So today, Medicare is essentially declaring the, the shift in payment that they're going to do, the private insurance companies will follow. But they're also saying, Here's the data formats by which we want this information to move so that if a patient is trying to understand their health records and is keen to understand what their own blood pressure readings are and what their medications list are, that it's the same list as if it was produced by vendor A, uh, Dr. C, uh, Hospital D. It doesn't matter who the uh, endpoint is, we want to understand that my medications list should be the same no matter which the source system might be. This is now regulation and in the current uh, plans by the year 2018, all certified electronic health record systems must prove that they can expose their patients data via APIs back to the apps that patients will designate who can help them make sense of their own data. That is a sea change in how the healthcare delivery system has managed data to date and is perhaps the biggest opportunity over the next several years for entrepreneurs and innovators. When the administration had talked about the need to make that blood pressure reading the same regardless of the system, that left open to the private sector a response as to how to go about executing that requirement. Well, the standards community has long been the place we've turned to answer these questions. And about five years ago, Graham and his band of merry brothers and sisters came together to say, here's how we can express RESTful APIs, health data as RESTful APIs. And so now we've been cooking in the oven, almost like two ships passing in the night, 
a regulatory system that says we want to have data open and a process in the private sector to kind of begin designing what that would look like. They were getting close to each other, but they weren't quite fully aligned. And so in December of 2014, a voluntary collaboration among the leading vendors and providers in the systems, Epic, Cerner, Athena, Meditech, etc., McKesson, came together to say, let's work in a collaborative fashion to accelerate the work that's been done on fire to ensure that it meets the needs for app developers in production as we proceed in care delivery reform. Graham's work was critical to that effort and it wouldn't have been possible for us to be where we are today. And it was the Argonaut project that al aligned all the vendor interests and the providers to come together and really turbocharge that last mile of activity that had to be done. Well, this to me is one of the more important announcements in helping people accelerate this journey. So now that the administration has given us a regulatory roadmap that suggests we're gonna be on this for the next three years, there are some in the industry that are gonna say, I was there yesterday, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna get moving. There are others that are gonna say, well, I'll wait as long as possible, this is a new thing, I'm not sure. But the vast majority understand that for success and for us to see a healthcare system that we want our own families to live and operate in, we wanna get moving. What Apogee announced today was the capacity for those organizations, the vast majority, who want to move forward but don't have to do all the individual bells and whistles. It's essentially an opportunity to access this as a service, to provide those fire profiles, those patient summary elements that can be exposed to the trading partners that those doctors and hospitals have who want to coordinate that care for those patients. And that to me is the most exciting thing. We've demystified this transition to open APIs and made it extremely simple for those who wish to participate to do so. I believe that we are going to see an absolute acceleration, not just in the adoption of the early versions of Fire, but in what the version 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5 look like. If you take a look at just the existing footprint of healthcare clients who are on Apogee today that might be consuming proprietary in-house APIs, who are now looking to connect with their trading partners. Many of them are trying to make sure that they're balancing privacy and security with that desire to connect. And the benefits of cl collaborative action within the Apogee framework is that they can actually learn from each other and implement those best practices in a manner that doesn't put any one organization at greater risk than the other when, with respect to privacy and security of health data. So to me, what this means is the standards will evolve, how we implement those standards will be better, and we will benefit from that collective input that uh, the community around the Apogee experience will allow. The most important thing is for the organization's tech leadership to say yes, as opposed to no. As we transition to value-based care, more doctors, nurses, caregivers are thinking about new workflow changes for providers and patients that can help them treat these folks in a more coordinated fashion. It's new capability that hasn't been hardwired into the IT systems that most organizations have used today. Now CIOs can say yes. We know that you want to experiment with new workflows that are patient or provider facing. Here's a set of secure protocols that would allow you to access that information and put it to work. Either IT can help build those reference applications or perhaps third parties who want to uh, support new opportunities internally, can collaborate. Anything that the organization is capable of doing is absolutely now uh, at their fingertips. So CIOs are going to be enablers of this clinical transformation journey, as opposed to have historically, in some cases, been seen as barriers to innovation. And I believe that this is going to turn the role of the technology leader into a clinical transformation partner. I would argue payers are actually in a better position to lead in this journey because they've already standardized so many of their core transactions. They just haven't exposed them as APIs. So they're today trading on processing claims and uh, building up networks and designing uh, mobile experiences for their, their customer base. They're already in the digital space and now they can move to a standards model so they can better connect. The yin to the yang is that while the providers are building up these clinical transformation muscles, they're in partnership and with financial support from the insurance industry. And so the insurance industry would love to share more data, more insights, more prediction models. And 
one way they can support those care transformation teams is by making that data, those apps available for organizations to use, to mash up and build in new, new ways. So the use cases to me that are going to be really exciting are those that can help organizations anticipate or better identify the risks that patients have or if they've had a change in status, to understand what the baseline would be if that patient was being treated under normal circumstances, and to say that if I'm a really good provider and I can care for that patient in a better way, I deserve to get rewarded for having treated that patient beyond what was otherwise likely to happen to them when they had this condition. And that's the opportunity that I see. They all will have data they can contribute either to or from this new transformed delivery system. So if I'm a pharmaceutical company and I want to attract more people to clinical trials, this will reduce the barriers to find the right population to attract. If I'm trying to provide post-market surveillance and make sure that the drugs that we put into the market are as safe as we anticipated during the process, this will give us a better opportunity to lower the barriers to get feedback as to whether or not those patients are cared for in the right way and are treated safely and uh, expeditiously. And then last but not least, to the extent that they want to build new products where they want to take on some of the risk. Hey, you know, for diabetic patients with these conditions, I'll take on some of that risk. And we'll emphasize not just the use of the meds, but the support systems to ensure those meds are optimized. Give us more of that uh, risk and we will demonstrate for you that not only are we getting paid for the pills, but when properly administered, it reduces unnecessary uh, hospitalization cost. So I think on new product development, as well as lowering barriers for existing data sharing, it's a win-win for payers, providers, pharma companies, and medical device companies. Finally, on the Internet of Things, it is most obvious that a new set of data will emerge of the condition of the patient's heart with that disposable, wearable pacemaker uh, or patch that's monitoring their heart condition, and that that information will be added to the mix of data to help us figure out the condition and the status of that patient to make sure that we're anticipating their needs and caring for them in the right setting.